Good evening. Welcome to the Haywood County Board of Commissioners meeting for October 19th, 2015. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the invocation. If everyone will please stand. I pledge allegiance to the Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for life and health that we all have to be here today. Father, we pray for the flood victims in South Carolina and in California. We pray that you be with them and give them peace and hope in their situation. Father, I pray that everything that's done and said here today would be done in a Christ-like manner. Lord, I pray for our law enforcement and our emergency workers that are out there to keep us safe and to protect us. I pray for those uh, who are overseas uh, looking out for our country and fighting for our country. And I just pray for them, that you bring them home safely. And we pray for them and their families. For you are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, at this point, I will open the public hearing. The purpose of the public hearing concerns local economic uh, development incentives pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 158.7, Point one nine D, which is uh, the fee simple conveyance of three parcels totaling 55.8 acres, acres at the Beaver Dam Industrial Park to Regional Recycling Solutions, LLC, by private negotiation. This property was purchased by the county in 1993, initially consisting of 103 acres, and became an industrial park at that time. This hearing will also address rumors and untrue information that has been circulated such as that this site will be used as a site for an incinerator or a landfill. Uh, there is not, nor will there ever be, an incinerator considered for this site. This prohibition will be included in the deed restrictions. This was made clear at the last meeting, but this inaccurate information has continued to be repeated. The cost of an incinerator exceeds half a billion dollars, and none have been permitted by the EPA since 1995, over 20 years. There is not, nor will there ever be, a landfill placed on this site. This will also be set forth in the deed restrictions. This site will be used exclusively as a recycling center. There will be no visible refuge and no odor. odor. Everything is enclosed inside a building. Uh, please be considerate and courteous to your fellow citizens. This is not a debate, it's a public hearing. Each person who so desires will have one opportunity to speak. Also, if I could ask you to please turn off your cell phones, and, uh, and I'll also remind you that there will be no vote taken tonight. Uh, our internal uh, procedures stipulate that we have to wait one meeting in order uh, to take a vote, so there will be no, uh, no vote tonight. So, do the other board members have anything they'd like to say before we get started? Okay. There'll be a lot of speakers, so again, we're limited to three minutes, so if you would please be courteous and do not exceed your time. The first speaker to sign up is Ronnie Brookshire. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Ira will have the presentations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would ask Mr. Ken Allison, I think, is gonna do the first mm -hmm. presentation. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. Uh, appreciate the opportunity and uh, to come before the citizens of Haywood County and uh, the Beaver Dam community in particular uh, to talk about the uh, regional recycling solutions recycling uh, proposal and the factory and the plant and give you as much detail as we can tonight to answer your questions and uh, give you a lot of information. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. We feel like uh, Haywood County is a beautiful community and uh, we really uh, think that site out there is, is, is a beautiful, beautiful site. Uh, I am the managing partner, Originals Recycling Solutions. We are a North Carolina company. I'm based in uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina right now and a uh, native to that area. I'm also in the farming uh, operation. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, we uh, as farmers always had to be good stewards of the land. and. Uh, we also feel like this recycling plant 
will be a very good neighbor to you folks and uh, would ask you to be patient and let us uh, answer your questions, let us tell you about the, the, uh, the facility and uh, how it works, how it operates, and give you a lot of information uh, that I think maybe there's been some misinformation and we'd like to uh, make that as clear as we can tonight. Uh, we are proposing uh, to purchase property in Haywood County and build a state-of-the-art European-style recycling system. Uh, you say, why European? Uh, well, the, uh, we went through about a two-year research program with this project, and uh, we were never really comfortable with the um, U.S. solutions to recycling. So we, we kept looking and kept looking, and uh, at one point we started looking at the European uh, solution and how they do waste in, in, in Europe. Uh, in Europe, there are virtually no landfills, and they have a zero waste mandate. That means they have to take care of all of their waste and all of their recyclables and uh, make them into some sort of viable product. Uh, we're not proposing that we do that today or tomorrow here in the U.S., but we think we do have a great, uh, a great operation that can recycle and take care of a, a tremendous amount of uh, commercial waste and also the uh, single stream waste that has been um, added uh, and separated at your homes. Uh, we are an American company. We're bringing European technology to increase recycling and reduce landfill space needs. Uh, one of the benefits of a company like this is we can extend the life of the landfill to communities and uh, basically it's very, very difficult to permit a new landfill and extending the life of these and getting more products into recycling is just a good thing. And we are a recycling company who has to handle some waste but we're not a waste company handling some recycling. Our focus is to do 100% recycling in every way that we can. Um, there's been a little bit of misinformation about uh, uh, household waste and uh, uh, things of that nature. We will have a very, very small portion of that initial uh, stock, probably 20% or less of actual household waste. Where the plant really shines is in commercial and industrial waste and in, in uh, product that has already been recycled at the home. And uh, we, we can do a very, very good job with that. And the recyclables mixed with uh, waste are of lesser quality and a much lower percentage to us. So our goal is to have you know, less than 20% of the waste in the beginning and then less than 5% thereafter. Can everyone, can everyone see these screens okay? Is it no glare? Okay. Uh, also, we are a regulated industry in that um, we are regulated by the Department of Environment, Health, and Natural Resources. They have a uh, Swannanoa Regional Office for the mountains, and they have offices throughout the state with the main office in, uh, in Raleigh. We will be uh, asking for a permit from that facility, and they will be ongoing regulatory issues. There will be inspections uh, from that regulatory agency to maintain uh, the recycling nature of the plant. All of our loads will be inspected, and if there are any non-permitted items, then those would be returned, or we would simply call Diener, and Diener would give us the disposal pr uh, protocols for that. Um, it's already been stated by the chairman, but uh, it needs to be probably said again, by, certainly by me. We have no inclination to ever have an incinerator or a landfill on that property. Uh, we are not permitted for that activity, uh, and uh, that's not what we're all about. We are simply recycling material. We are bringing in uh, factories waste and factories overruns. Uh, an example of one of our contracts uh, Freightliner Trucks in East Tennessee is bringing plastic parts that are not meeting spec. We'll take those plastic parts, run them through optical sorting, separate the plastics, and bale those plastics inside the building. 
and then send those back to be repurposed into other products. Um, one thing that we did early on, well, okay, the game plan here is uh, our primary target is commercial and we'll do industrial counts and single stream recycling. Single stream recycling, the easiest way to say it, it's, your, it's the recycling that you do at home to separate products that can go to the landfill and products that need to be recycled. Uh, there's been significant <coughs> processing improvements over the current recycling operations that are currently available in Western North Carolina. The uh, facility that we are proposing uh, has an automatic bag opener at the front. Uh, all of the recycled materials that are in bags, we have a way to open that and uh, separate it from the plastic and move it down the line for, for more separation and bailing and send it on to the processors. Uh, currently, no other recycling company in West North Carolina has a bag breaker, so it makes it very, very difficult for the current two small recycling plants to keep up. Uh, we've had counties with their uh, recyclables turned away and held and delayed. And then some recyclables actually ended up in the landfill. Uh, we're proposing the most advanced technology <coughs> recycling company in the southeast. Uh, we went to Diener early on and we asked them, what would you want in a recycling company? And uh, <clears throat> they said, well, the, the, uh, the first thing that we'd want is a uh, controlled environment. So that means that every bit of our activity is inside the building. There won't be anything outside uh, other than the, the trucks backing in into a building and trucks leaving. Um, we'll have a state-of-the-art uh, uh, weigh station where they come in and be weighed, and we'll have cameras, time and date. We'll know who brings what in, and we'll have tracking on that. But uh, the uh, facility that we're proposing runs about 25 tons an hour. And for those of you who are concerned about traffic issues, that, uh, those trucks haul about nine tons each. So it's gonna be a little less than three, three trucks an hour to maintain the plant. Um, in phase one, our uh, initial investment is a $12 million investment for the infrastructure and development costs. That is the first plant. Uh, we would have 20 employees in production, seven employees in administrative uh, uh, capacity, and three employees in log logistics, which would be trucking. Uh, these are average salaries and there will have benefits uh, with the employees. Uh, to give you an idea of the building, uh, the regulatory folks are very, very happy and pleased with the plans that, have, that, have, that we've given them and plans that have come forth. This building is uh, 120 feet wide, uh, 575 feet long and about 30 feet high at the gutter. Uh, the, I don't know if you can make it out or not, but the front doors on the left side there, the trucks will literally back in and the material will be received in the, inside the building. And then if any material is rejected from, from that point, it, there, will be, there will be trucks waiting inside the building to be loaded out to go to the landfill. After it goes through the process all the way to the other end of the building, any in-stream waste will also be taken to the landfill, but there again in a controlled environment. In looking at uh, planning the project and how could we be the best neighbor we can be and be the lowest impact of all, uh, we looked at our neighbors with the uh, uh, subdivision behind us and up the hill. And uh, we went back to the engineers and we said, let's turn the building uh, 180 degrees and that should mitigate a lot of the uh, activity on site for our neighbors next door. So that has been done and that's been resubmitted as a change to the plan on phase one. Uh, we also want to do a heavy amount of landscaping and particularly where the west end of the property line where we meet that residential area. Uh, we've got 20 foot evergreens on reserve to go into that area to give a, a full year-round evergreen screen for, for those few neighbors that are there. Uh, we think this will do two things for us. It'll mitigate the, uh, the view of the building, view of the site, 
and uh, a noise buffer as well. Uh, to uh, go a little further, uh, we've had some questions about odors. Um, there will be very, very little odor in a facility like this because the material is uh, so, so very clean, being from businesses mainly and being from recycling that's already been done. So a lot of the organics are just not there. But we have a uh, company out of Canada called Ecolo that will do a full odor control system in the roof to mitigate you know, any, any type of odors that we may have. Um, the plant was studied by OSHA and it came back with receiving a designation that uh, as far as noise goes, none of the workers on the line would be required to have hearing protection. So it's very, very quiet. Uh, the, about the only thing that we know uh, you, you, you might hear would be some, some truck noise. But there are uh, buildings insulated, roof and walls, and like I say again, it uh, is all enclosed in a controlled environment. Uh, this is a picture of the perspective of the, of the equipment and how the, how the building works. Uh, the left side is the receiving area uh, where the recyclables come in and then they're loaded into the equipment at the front, processed all the way through the back, and then the bailing is at the very back of the plant. This is a close-up of the floor level of the plant and showing the bins of recyclables. Uh, there's plastic, there's paper, there's cardboard, and there's a light amount of metals uh, involved in this, uh, in this facility. Gives another idea of the, of the movement of the material going through and being processed. It's all galvanized uh, metals, and uh, all this is from Germany. Uh, this gives a uh, look at the uh, phase one of the, build, of, of the plan, and that's the first site that's already been graded and leveled by the county. Uh, this is how the building footprint would look like, and on the right side of the building is where the trucks would back into the receiving area, and the left side of the building is the shipping area out. Uh, just to the, where that curved line is, that's where we propose to put in those large evergreen uh, trees uh, to help screen from our neighbors. Um, at all of our facilities, we have uh, currently 12 facilities planned uh, throughout the U.S. Um, we are doing a visitor education center. We feel like it's very, very important to have uh, an education component to teach recycling. Uh, the programs are being developed by uh, the, the state in Raleigh, and they're very, very supportive of that. Uh, this would also be a community center. Should any group need it, uh, it's there and available. There's a 40-seat theater room inside this. In the, in the school system in North Carolina, the fourth grade classes have a recycling semester. We're inviting all the schools in the fourth grade in the 18 counties and serving Western North Carolina to come and visit and go through the facility and do the recycling education here on site. Um, we found that the next generation of citizens if they are recycling, this will help a tremendous amount to get the recycling percentages up and make things work so much better for all of us. We normally get sponsors uh, in this regard, uh, corporate sponsors, and we have a little contest once every other month. Uh, it may be a paper drive one month, two months later it may be a plastic bottom drive. The school system that collects the most ends up getting computer equipment or a field trip or something. We try to get the kids excited about recycling. We're very, very excited about this part of the, the component of the, of the facility. And we are using extensive landscaping on the front to make this an attractive place to visit. Phases two and three are down the road and uh, that would be the property that is to the west of the site. Uh, Phase two is an $8 million additional infrastructure with 21 additional employees. Phase three is a $4.8 million additional infrastructure with 20 additional employees. And 
that's one reason that we really excited about a 40 to 50 acre site. It gives us room to grow with the community and be there for a very, very long time. This gives you a perspective of the, the mountain industrial development and how it works. Uh, it's always a challenge to, uh, to put uh, industrial sites on, on mountainous property, but we will grade out uh, three pads. The first pad on the upper right is already graded and uh, is pretty much ready to go. The two pads on the left are the proposed development that would happen in the future. Uh, like I said, we do have uh, future plans to open 12 other facilities in the U.S. And uh, being from Hendersonville and this being our closest uh, facility, uh, we're, we, we would like to uh, have our corporate headquarters here on site in Haywood County uh, in, in the very, very near future. That will probably happen before phase two or three. Um, a couple other things that uh, bears mentioning uh, is uh, sustainability. Um, there are a lot of companies, it used to be just the big companies that really wanted to look at sustainability and say we must recycle, we must do this in order to, it's good public relations and it's good for our bottom line. What we're finding now is the small to medium sized companies are also wanting to do the recycling and recycle the products that they have and there's recycling investment credits. So what happens is um, in Charleston, South Carolina, the one reason they got Boeing was they had a large recycler there and they could take all of their uh, recycled parts and, and have them processed there. So that we bring a little bit more to the table than just one recycling center. We think there'll be other companion businesses coming into Haywood County, bringing jobs and bringing payrolls. And uh, manufacturing jobs are certainly, uh, you know, a level of pay that really helps our younger generation stay here and work here and, uh, and, and build their families here. Let's see if I forgot anything else. Um, we've, we formed a relationship with Stadler Engineering out of Germany. Uh, you're certainly welcome to Google them as well. Uh, they have over 260 plants worldwide, and Stadler is our commissioned ma manufacturer that will bring everything in front to back, soup to nuts, and we're very, very comfortable and very happy with what they've done. Uh, there's an operational plant just opened in Lawrence, Kansas. It's called Ham Services. Uh, it's, a, it's the first full Stadler German plant in the U.S. And um, I, I encourage you to take a look at that plant, see how it's working. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call out there and ask the uh, uh, solid waste director in that county or the, or the folks who are in charge uh, at the uh, staff level in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, I think you'll find that it's a very clean facility all indoors in a controlled environment, and uh, the folks over there are very, very happy with it. Um, I hope this answers some of the questions and uh, gives you an idea as to what we're, what we're all about. And uh, that's about all I have. Thank you. But before he leaves, um, Ken, I, you've addressed a lot of the concerns that I know that people have um, called and, and emailed me about, and that's the noise and the smell and, and the controlled environment and the fact that you're being regulated. I, I know some of the issues and concern that they may have, and you can address that prior to, to anyone speaking, is the fact that this has been attempted in other counties. And, and it may be that you provide a little bit of background on, on each one of those situations. Okay, yeah, uh, sure. So they have sure. that prior to the... Uh, yeah. Let's see. The, that's what I, I mean. I'm being a farmer. I really didn't know about the recycling industry or, or, or this whole uh, side of the world. Uh, we were approached. My family was uh, a number of years ago, maybe three, four years ago. Uh, we have an industrial park in uh, Transylvania County in Brevard, and uh, we were approached by a group from New York, and they they were doing what they call a waste to energy project. Uh, I didn't really know that much about it, didn't know exactly what it was. Uh, but that project uh, involves heating of material, uh, pyrolysis, gasification, things that I'm not uh, sure of and don't know anything about. Um, 
uh, it, there's an awful lot of uh, technology in that type of industry. Uh, the community was unsure of it as well. Uh, my family was involved in selling these guys the property. Um, the, pro the project ended up not happening. Uh, it, was, it was a combination of, of the community didn't want it and uh, the technology maybe wasn't as proven as, 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 as some people had thought. Um, but it did get me thinking about uh, the industry and recycling. And uh, uh, like I say, there's over 260 plants you know, worldwide that we're doing. Uh, the North American headquarters for Stadler in Germany has, been, has just moved into Spartanburg, South Carolina. So we're not worried about support on parts, but we also know that if the facility is built in Haywood County, this will be their flagship facility. And I'm sure that we won't want for anything because they're gonna be wanting to show this facility and be very, very proud of it. So from that perspective, I think we're in, we're in great shape as a community because of the level of support we're gonna get. And uh, they're gonna go above and beyond because this is their, their, their first larger size plant in uh, the US. Uh, we, we looked first at a recycling opportunity in Henderson County. We couldn't put the property together, so that property, that project did not come forward. Then we looked at uh, Pond Road in Buncombe County as a possible site, and um, we had uh, property that was correctly zoned, and it was a uh, cow pasture at, at the time, had beef cattle over there. Um, but we had a lot of, uh, uh, of, of, of community uh, misinformation on that project. And uh, we looked around at our alternatives and uh, we, we stumbled onto the Haywood project and we actually got interested in it. Uh, uh, it was a beautiful project. It was close to I-40. It had the right amount of infrastructure with water and sewer and it also had the right amount of access. Um, but anyway, we're very excited about Haywood County and the possibilities for here, and we look to be a good neighbor. Uh, we would hope that uh, uh, at some point we can sit down and have a, uh, if, if, if we get the go-ahead, we'd like to have a, a public forum with the, with the neighbors in Beaver Dam or wherever we wanted to meet, and if there's any additional questions or what have you, uh, we'll have a little bit more plans, a little bit more detail at that, that point as well. Any other questions of Ken before he? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to introduce the, the uh, your? Uh, yeah. Uh, this two two of our staffers. This is Ricky Hardy on our left. Uh, our staff uh, has a little over a hundred years in recycling, but it's not all Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> and T.J. Ledbetter in uh, in uh, human resources and operations. Uh, they're here with me tonight. Uh, we have 11 people on staff uh, that are uh, ready to go. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, uh, Ira Dove. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, and members of the public. Be sure to speak into the microphone, Ira. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, and members of the public. Thank you all for being here this evening. We're going to talk. Um, about this uh, recycling project. This public hearing is over the economic incentives. We will touch on that. Uh, we're gonna answer a little bit of the feedback that's come in and we're gonna talk about some of the benefits for Haywood County. We can get that, it's not advancing. Advance it that way. Can you advance that way? Good. Can you draw it for me? Good. <coughs> Let me go to the first slide after this. Okay. 
The county purchased 103 acres, as your, the chairman mentioned, back in 1993 from the Greenland Company. Uh, Elkin Incorporated purchased 40 of the acres in April 1998. Roltec uh, purchased three acre, acres in December of 1998, and the county bought an additional 16 acres in 1999. Now, there were nine homes built to this uh, industrial park, Green Mountain Estates, from 2003 to 2006. And Plus Cleaners purchased uh, six acres in 2005 from the county to, to build up there. And in 2008, the county graded this site. But I would submit to you that the story that we're talking about goes back a good bit further than that. And that's because there was a decision made um, at one point in time to run I-40 through Haywood County, and part of that was for industry purposes. Next slide. Okay. Presently, these are the players that are out there. ConMed employs 500 people, um, plus cleaners 109. Carolina Conveying uh, has three employees, lots of employees, lots of cars, lots of trucks. This is an industrial park. Next slide. If we look at uh, what's happening over there, there are other industries out there with environmental oversight may be a little difficult to see. This would be regulated, and there are already regulated things out there. Um, the Department of Environmental Quality for the state of North Carolina would regulate this particular facility. In addition, um, if you look at I-40 running there, a little difficult to see on this map, by exit 33, you have an EPA regulated business right there already. Within a half a mile of that exit, you have a propane, a, a con condensed fuels regulated business. On the other side of I-40, you have a couple of old landfills that were open at one point in time and are now closed. You also have someone who built a private industrial park on the other side of I-40, and they have a business in there that's regulated uh, for air quality. So. There are already businesses around there that are regulated industries. Were those industries subject to community or public uh, hearings? Mm, Private ventures? These, well, uh, I was not around when the landfills were built or closed on that, that range. I'm talking about things. the ones with the permits. Uh, the permits, to my knowledge, they were private businesses. Okay. But they're very close and all, all, all are there. Next slide, please. Stockyard too, isn't it? There is a stockyard out there. I mean, we are grateful to have all of the business, and that's one of the reasons that people fought back in the early 1970s for I-40 to run through Haywood County, to open it up and keep it open as a business corridor. Now, environmental impact. I've looked around and I see a lot of people with circles on their chest uh, that say they don't want waste in Beaver Dam. And this is an admirable goal. I think we all share this, and I think people in industrialized nations share this goal all over the world. So I would submit to you that if we're going to say we don't want waste, then we have to ask the question of how are we going to get there? And one of the solutions that's been tried not once or twice, but hundreds of times in Europe is recycling. And if we, if we want industry, how are we going to get there? And the question is, bring this industry to us. So if we look at the environmental impact, what we really want is we want to be safe. You don't want a landfill. We don't want to smell it. And I know that I've seen a lot of stuff about incinerators uh, that somebody put on Facebook this week. Um, that's simply not what this is. This is a, a tried and true technology. It's going to be the environmental impact. It will be regulated by, uh, as we said, the North Carolina Division of, uh, Department of Environmental Quality, which was formerly Diener, Department of Natural Resources. Uh, the permit, we have uh, in Clyde a, a multi-resource uh, facility, um, recycling facility, multi-use recycling facility in Clyde. There are other commercial transfer stations. They have to have that kind of permit because when they're sorting, that's just what Diener classified it under. The permit restricts the storage of waste to inside the building. This is not a landfill. This is, this is actually going to be better than what they have in uh, Clyde because we have to have our stuff off the ground and inside a building, but this building is going to be much 
It's going to have much better odor control and noise control in the, the projected phases. So when we look at the environmental impacts, are there going to be trucks coming up? Yes. I can promise you that if the, in that industrial park, anything we do to build is going to bring trucks. If we look at environmental impacts, are there going to be unregulated uses and activities? No. Are there going to be things that are outside of that building? No. That's what has to happen. It has to all be enclosed in buildings. Next, please. In addition, um, as part of the conversations and the discussions, there's going to be a deed restriction against any type of incineration. It was mentioned there would be no incineration I would put out there at the last time we all spoke. The property cannot be permitted for any type of landfill operations, and it will be deed restricted. We're looking at uh, 55 acres in the Beaver Dam Industrial Park. There is a graded site pad, again, that's been there since 2008. And when you look up the road uh, coming from I-40, I would submit to you that it, uh, when they broaden that exit, it was to help with business on that interchange. Next slide, please. We have placed the fair market value of the property at about $780,000. Um, given what the county has in the property, the purchase price, along with the grading, along with uh, the relative economy at this time. The regional recycling facility will pay about 458000 at closing. The county will offer $330,000 worth of incentive with a clawback provision um, to make sure that they do the full build out and we get all of the jobs. They will begin construction under the terms within 12 months. Their first phase for construction would be a $12 million capital investment and they'd have to employ a minimum number of 30 people in that salary range of 28,900 to 38,000. They would have to invest, and when I say they would have to, these are in agreement. This is, uh, you know, the full deal that we put together. They have to do this in order to get any of the incentives. Uh, $8 million employing at least 21 people within 60 months of the closing date. Uh, if they complete phase two, we would grant a release of 165,000 of the $330,000 incentive. If they fail to complete phase two, they would immediately owe us the $330,000. The last phase, they would need to invest 4.8 million in an additional facility employing 20 people. That's one way they can get there within 84 months or they can create an equivalent number of uh, jobs throughout the other two phases and add a headquarters or a logistics uh, branch for their other 12 industries, because these are all related industrial uses. Those are other ways they can get there to get to the incentive. <coughs> Economic impact, phase one, about a $1.5 million payroll, 30 employees, 28,900 to 38,000 dollars. Phase two payroll increases uh, 720,000 with an additional 21 employees. Phase three, the annual payroll will go to of 735 with 20 more employees. Total potential annual payroll in seven years of over 2.9 million per year. We'd bring about 70 jobs with an average uh, salary on the low end of 28.9. Total payroll impact for phase one will be $5.2 million, with a total of all phases about $11.3 million. And the infrastructure investment, if they invest all three phases, is about $24.8 million. If we can, is there one more? Now, for tax purposes, uh, this talks about the different uh, taxes that they would pay in the annual payrolls. That's what this economic impact slot is about. $72,000 per year, uh, 236 in taxes. Years one through four, or until they ever they get phase two built out. Uh, if that comes in year six that they get the phase out, then there would be 86,000 in taxes paid. And this is after economic incentives, because in this contract, as we often do, when people uh, and we've done this with Sunoco, ComEd, and others, when they build out um, 
the plant, they don't pay the full taxes on the, the build out at that time on the expansions. And so that same deal would hold here. 86,000 is what they would pay to the county for that year um, in year seven, and then in years eight, nine, and 10, 97,000. The total incentives between year six and 10 equate to about $100,000. But the total impact, $21 million of impact to Haywood County between payroll and taxes. Next slide, please. If all three phases are built, we can expect an additional 48 jobs in other areas. And this was done by Western Carolina that did some uh, research on this. In other areas of approximately 1.3 million in payroll annually. We can expect $2.8 million in additional development with an overall impact of approximately $16 million annually to the Haywood County economy. And if all three phases are, are built, then in addition to um, having just the economic impacts, again, I think we are all interested in no waste in the world, and the question is how do we get there? For me, this project does have a positive environmental impact for Haywood County and for the region. It does have a definite economic positive impact, and if they follow through immediately and build the uh, recycling um, education center, then I would say that it has a positive educational impact as well, so that it would be a, a positive on the environment, the economy, and education. Thank you. Any questions? Or... Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll begin the uh, comment uh, period. First person, I'm just going to take these in the order in which uh, folks signed up. Um, Ronnie Brookshire. Three yeah, and li limit three minutes, if you would, because a lot of people have signed up. Good afternoon, commissioners and county manager. It's a privilege to be here because in 1967 and 1968, I fought for this privilege to be here, fought for my country in another country. And I feel like now it's time for me to fight for my community in this country. Uh, I feel like uh, that some of these things we've been told cannot possibly be true come because I've always found out if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. One thing is, I don't see how he can guarantee three trucks an hour because when these trucks in different parts of the country are full, they're going to head towards Haywood County. And right now we already have enough uh, traffic on that road out there, what we have. It's easy to get to the interstate and off the interstate for these truckers, but it's coming extremely hard for the people of this community, the people that live in that community, to fight that traffic out there. If you don't believe it, come out there at quitting time from the uh, industrial park people that are out there, and they 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 have good jobs and they're ready to go home. But uh, I just feel like it's gonna be a big traffic problem and I don't think we're getting the whole truth from Mr. County Manager and the gentleman over here that some of the things they guarantee, they, I don't see how they can guarantee it. And I appreciate y'all listening to me this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy Davis. How are we guys? It's good to see everybody here. Um, I'm not from Beaver Dam. I'm from Bethel. I've got two children here in the audience tonight, another one at home. And quite frankly, we don't buy it. Um, since this is all came to light over the past two weeks, We've discussed this with everybody in our community. I've talked to the stores, the restaurants, the schools. Nobody wants to see this thing. And I'm just here to let Beaver Dam know that we're, the people from Bethel support you folks that are here tonight. And we're letting you know that we, we don't want this. We've been lied to about trash in this county so many times. 
And everybody that's in this room knows that because they got a tax bill this last time for an increase in taxes on trash of 4.6% to the county, 9.2% if you live in a municipality, and it's terrible. We just, we don't wanna see this here. We want clean air, clean water. And to address where incinerator rumors came from, anybody that has a Google connection in this room right now or anywhere else, Google European recycling. It's recycling and what can't be recycled is incinerated. It's, it's the, basic of the basis of the application. And that's all I've got tonight. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you pay attention to all these people. I will remember to reset your timer, please. Uh, Barry Bailey. Uh, gentlemen, I have some specific questions. I'm confused about how they might be answered. You'll hear the question. I don't know. Okay. All right. Just don't cut me off on my three minutes then. Well, no, you have three minutes. Uh, sir. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Allison uh, mentioned that uh, uh, waste would be brought in from uh, an example was Tennessee. So there's waste being uh, brought in that's not currently served uh, by the uh, Haywood County landfill, so it'll be processed by the facility. So, will the 10 to 70 percent of the uh, uh, non-recyclables shorten the life of the Haywood County landfill? No. I'll explain that, and I won't count that against your time. Sure. There is a contract that the landfill can only accept so many tons of waste. All right. If, that, if this company moves in, that contract will not change. It's permitted through, through Diener, and only X amount can go in. That amount's going in now. No. Now, I'm not going to have that. If you, another outburst, and you're out of here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, a specific question for, probably for Mr. Allison. Uh, how does the load inspection process work where you get unpermitted and non-permitted loads? Uh, if, if you'll bear with me just a minute. The, uh, the, the first point that you made uh, was the, uh, the uh, uh, company from uh, Tennessee. That is... Uh, Plastics that are dedicated to that company, they actually are repurposed and, and just separated by the plastic types, bailed and sent back to that company or to the company that, that they designate the, the plastic to be re remade to. That, that par product never goes to landfill. Uh, then the second question was, uh, what, what was your second? Uh, load inspection. Oh, the load inspection process. Uh, the, uh, we'll have a camera system at the uh, scale house time and date stamped, and then our floor manager at the receiving area will inspect every load as it comes in. That answer? After it's unloaded? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. But if, it, if there's something in there that's not a permittable product, it will be put back on that truck. You know, we're, we're, we're a, a regulated industry, and we're allowed to take certain recyclables, and that's it. Thank okay, you. got about a minute left. You go ahead. Other, other question, the next question is, will all streams of waste currently going into the Haywood County landfill be routed to this facility in order to extract the recyclables? That arrangement has not been made as of yet. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, Mr. Allison, you answered this question. You have 11 people on staff in, in the corporate office. Is that, is that correct? And the office is located in Henderson County? That's correct. Okay, all right. I just did, hadn't heard any details on that. Uh, next question is, how many facilities of this type does RRS currently operate, and how long have they been in operation?
Okay. Okay, that, that's, that's all the time you've got. I'm sorry. We've got several right. people that uh, have signed up. Thank you. Barbara Wilkins. Barbara, Barbara w Wilkins. Worley, Harvey Worley, is that who you said? Uh, <laughs> Barbara Wilkins. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I said Harvey. So my name is Barbara Wilkins. I'm a Haywood County landowner and I'm a registered voter. Uh, the Economic Development Council is recommending this plan because it creates jobs for Haywood County. But there's some discrepancies in the numbers of jobs that Mr. Allison is using to justify his plan. The only trash sorting facility currently in use in the U.S. is the Lawrence, Kansas facility, and it sorts single stream household waste. In the video clip, it was reported that it made nine new jobs. When Mr. Allison proposed building the plant in Buncombe County using the same machinery, he told them there would be 11 new jobs. So nine and 11, that's pretty close. And then Mr. Allison's invited to Haywood County and he's offered the 10 acre shovel ready site in Beaver Dam. And he proposed building the exact same plant, the same size building, the same equipment. But somehow the job creation number jumped to 30. So 30 is not a really big number, so we suspect somewhere behind the scenes, closed doors, a conversation like this might have happened. We have two other adjacent parcels totaling about 46 acres that will make part of the deal. The parcels are each large enough for an additional plant. So maybe Mr. Allison decided to add this gift with purchase to the project, take his construction plans, cut and paste, and come up with phase two and phase three. So now there's three plants, and the job count jumps to 70. On paper, in seven to eight years, if they ever get built. This is all smoke and mirrors, and making the numbers say what you want them to say. Our local economy is improving. Western North Carolina's economy is improving. We have a thriving ConMet plant in Beaver Dam Industrial Park with 550 good paying jobs. If like businesses attract, then a better idea to, is to hold on to that 10 acre site, continue the search for a business that will add more jobs, higher paying jobs with a higher skill level, and a cleaner jobs than trash recycling. Just consider all the publicity this controversy has created. Someone out there is saying, gee, I wish I knew that site was available. Well, now they do. Aline Rice. Aline Rice. My name is Aline Francis Rice. I'm a lifelong resident of Haywood County, having lived in Beaver Dam since the 19, early 1950s. My husband, Jack Rice, a former county commissioner, was a lifelong resident of Beaver Dam community. His grandparents on both sides were among the earliest settlers to establish is now what is now Beaver Dam Valley. They lived in the Rice Cove section, which is the home of the Rough Creek watershed, which consists of 870 acres of pristine and majestic protected mountain lands owned by the town of Canton. In 1986, the residents of Beaver Dam community fought the U.S. Department of Energy 
over their plans to transform this pristine mountain land into a high-level nuclear repository. Residents of this community became proactive and found banned Beaver Dam against nuclear dumping. We, we won this victory, but here again, 30 years later, we face another battle to see, save our beautiful valley. As with the many residents that are here tonight, I strongly oppose the, the community's proposal for a recycling center that will destroy our beautiful <coughs> Beaver Dam Valley. I urge each commissioner to vote no to the proposal. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Robin Gillis. I, I found, I just found last night some information that you might want to hear. Since 1997, the Refugee Creek watershed has been certified as a North Carolina Register Natural Heritage Area because of it, its unique ecosystem and natural resources. We may lose that. Thank you, ma'am. That's all, and thank you. Thank you. Robin Gillis. Good evening. I'm not the speaker of the family. My mother is, and my dad would be if he were here. But I just, uh, I came from Greenville, South Carolina. I am a property owner in Beaver Dam and would love to be living up here. I would sincerely hate to see it turned into um, anything more than it is now, which is beautiful valley. Um, I have just a few questions that you can answer now or not. Um, I know that you say there are limited trucks going in to the facility. Well, obviously those have to come back out. And then I'd like to know how many other trucks there would be to pick up what has been recycled. So, you know, the total traffic count, I'm sure, is more than, um, you know, just going to the recycling center. Um, I'm curious as to, I know that you've got the, the odor, I don't know what, what to call them, odor eaters in the plant, but where do those vapors go um, when you're finished with those, where do those gases go? Are they released into the environment? <laughs> I'd also like to know what is the level of uh, decibels that come from plant noise? I know you say that the people don't have to wear um, any kind of headgear, but I'm curious, like I can hear uh, the, the laundry facility at night sometimes when I'm at mom and daddy's, so I know there's noise, and I'd like to know how that is really handled. I want to, I'd like to know what your standard operating hours are, and I think y'all addressed that, but I can't remember what that is. You can do this at, at any time. I'm, I just wrote down a few notes, and um, will these be local jobs for the people of Haywood County, or are they going to be for other people coming into, um, you know, up, just applying for those jobs? Thank you so much. We appreciate you listening to us and being here, and I commend all of the residents for being here. I know there are many that probably can't be here, and I just wanted to say thank you, and I oppose this uh, proposed recycling center. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sean State. And my name is uh, Sean State, and I'm the uh, Senior Vice President for the Southern Region for Pratt Recycling, a division of Pratt Industries. 
Uh, Pratt Industries is a, a $2 billion privately held company based out of Conyers, Georgia, with 5,000 uh, plus employees in the U.S. So very large recycler. In the southern region, um, I've got 13 recycling facilities that report directly to me. Uh, some of them uh, similar but not identical to what they're proposing. And uh, there's a couple of things that I think need to be questioned. Um, and I think that uh, the folks here, which is a, a great turnout, by the way, uh, you know, should get the answer. And I think they need to get clear answers. But a couple of notes that I took down that said there, if this is going to be similar to Murph and Clyde uh, and other commercial transfer stations, um, I would want to know what kind of transfer stations, if I were these folks. Is it a solid waste transfer station? Are you going to try and pull uh, recycled material from the solid waste? Uh, if you are, that's not working. It's proven not to work. There's a $35 million facility in Montgomery, Alabama that just recently uh, closed. Temporarily is what the news accounts say, but for those in the recycling industry, uh, we know that uh, uh, it's probably not going to make it. We've suspected it wouldn't make it. And when they miss the mark by $11 million in their first year, you're not going to make it. It's, it's not financially sustainable, and neither is this venture. So I would question what kind of permit. Pratt has facilities in Fayetteville, North Carolina, a single stream facility, the kind of facility where you would get uh, uh, paper, plastics, aluminum, that kind of thing. And uh, we don't need a solid waste uh, permit in Fayetteville. We've got a, what we call a push and bail plant, which is mainly fiber in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We don't need a solid waste uh, a transfer station permit for that facility. So I would question that. I think that, that needs to be answered and that needs to be clear. Additionally, I've brought with me some letters from the Recycling Industries Coalition and from the Paper Recycling Coalition that oppose this. Uh, both groups oppose it and Pratt Industries opposes it because it's what's called a dirty MRF. It's not a clean MRF, it's a dirty MRF. And the uh, recycling industry cannot take material that's commingled with garbage and trash. And if he does what he wanted to do in Buncombe County, that's what, exactly what he's proposing. So if you have any questions for me, I'd, I'd encourage you to answer, ask me some questions. Uh, a couple other points, as long as I've got a minute here. The volumes do not speak uh, for this facility being successful. Montgomery cannot be successful. Montgomery is a city of 400,000 plus, surrounded area of 700,000 plus. It didn't make it. We recently built a facility, a $12 million facility in Conyers, Georgia, that could literally handle nearly all of the, the, uh, the uh, uh, recyclable waste in Atlanta. All the single stream recyclable waste in Atlanta could potentially go through our facility. This area, it, it doesn't need one this big. It doesn't need anything of this size and scale. Thank you. Thank you. Is it fair to say that th this plant, if built, would be a, a business competitor for you? No. Uh, we'd actually, if this, if this facility was built, um, we would actually want to buy paper out of it if it was not a dirty MRF. Uh, if if uh, we've, we've gone from one facility in the last eight years to 16 in the U.S., 13 in my region, if this region could sustain a facility like this, we'd have already built it here. Thank you. Mr. Allison, do you have any comment about any of that? It's certainly business competition, and uh, uh, we we uh, we recognize that. It's that easy. Don't don't. We're not going to have this, folks. He's. He, okay. All right, Amanda. I think it's Fairley or Farley. Fairley. Okay, I'm sorry. Good evening. Thank you for letting us be here. My name is Amanda Farrelly. I work with waste management. And I've been with the waste management for seven years. And I've worked in the waste and recycling industry uh, for a little bit over probably seven, uh, 10 years. And I live in the North Carolina mountains. Waste management, as you might know, is the largest recycler in North America. We don't have a facility here. Similar to 
what Sean has said, we don't believe there's enough material here for us to have a facility here. There are currently already two <coughs> material recovery facilities in the area that do a good job. With this facility, we are concerned about the recycling industry's health. Because the recycling industry in North Carolina generates over 15,000 jobs. That's a lot of jobs. And whenever we're talking about this kind of dirty MRF, the dirty recycling facility, this kind of facility takes trash as well as recyclables and then tries to pull out recyclables that are clean, that can be used to support the industry we have developed in North Carolina to use the plastics and paper and other kinds of materials pulled out from a MRF. Unfortunately, the material, the recyclables, pulled out of this kind of dirty MRF, they are spo uh, soiled, wet, and unusable by the recycling industry in general. So what we really want to do as waste management and the largest recycler in the area, in the nation, we want to make sure that these recyclables are pulled out for the best value that they can actually provide. And by doing that, you need to make sure that we're using them in a commingled recycling fashion, which Haywood County is doing. So let's make that program better instead of having the recyclables put to a lesser value and more of them going into the landfill. One of the other things that I want to make sure that is discussed here is that similar to what Sean said, there was a similar dirty MRF that was in Montgomery, Alabama that recently failed. They, had, they could not meet their financial obligations. And I would hate for Haywood County to have a similar situation happen here. With that said, I want to submit an article summarizing what happened in Montgomery, Alabama. And I also want to submit three letters of opposition from local recycling facilities. One is waste management, one is the American Recycling Company, and the other is Kirby. Thank you. Johnny Curie. My name is Johnny Curie. I'm a licensed North Carolina real estate agent concerned about Beaver Dam and the property values that these people who are here represent. It will be a problem uh, in future sales of property. These people have invested uh, lifetimes of, of earnings in the, probably the biggest investment of their life, which, is, which are their homes. That we have already established an industrial park in their neighborhood. Many of them knew it was there when they moved in, <clears throat> but they expect commissioners at the helm of Haywood County to respect their property values and to carefully select the, the types of industries that will go into their neighborhood. And I appreciate the terminology that we're picking up here this evening. I would urge you not to approve a dirty MRF. Okay, Mr. Uh, Allison, did I pronounce that correctly? mentioned he stumbled around after failing to establish a plant in several other locations here in the mountains, and he stumbled upon Haywood County with the help of Mark Swenger. I, I, Thank you. I would suggest that he stumble on down the road and find another location where the community would welcome him with open arms and be good neighbors, because we do not intend nor want to see a dirty MRF, this type of recycling plant, in our community. And I appreciate the two experts who have stood here and spoken regarding that industry, and I thank you very much. Ronnie Scott. I want to say thank you for giving me the time to voice my concerns. Uh, my name is Ronnie Scott. My wife and I live behind Commit. Kathy and I are very much aware that we live behind an industrial park. 
but we feel that Haywood County has the ability to bring a company that would benefit our community instead of wanting to bring in RRS. You want to have a company that will not hurt, only hurt the Beaver Dam area, but also the reason for the de decrease in the property value for the surrounding homes. We are totally appalled that our county commissioners, whom we voted for, is willing to allow this type of company into our region. No matter what, when you put the word waste, trash, or any of that into it, <coughs> um, the Beaver Dam community is it inevitable that property values will go down. Another one is the issue of the large trucks and increased traffic. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, traffic due to ComMet, and since they've increased their business, there's been way more traffic. So if you add these traffic on top of that, then people that's coming in wanting to buy homes, wanting to check out land, you know, you look at sort of things like that, how much traffic's on the road and stuff like that. So we think that, you know, it's gonna decrease the property value so much. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Wilkins. My name is Larry Wilkins, and I am a resident and registered voter of Haywood County. Most residents of Haywood County probably don't know that the White Oak landfill already accepts waste from 17 other counties in North Carolina. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our current landfill is rumored to last approximately five to seven more years before it is filled to capacity with the waste from Haywood and the other 17 counties. Using the figures that Regional Recycling Solutions presented to the commissioners, consider the following. 600 tons of waste will be processed on a daily basis when fully operational, all three phases. Initially, the first plant will process 200 tons of waste daily. By their own admission, they will only be able to salvage between 30 and 90 percent of this waste, and the rest will go to the landfill. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're able to salvage 60 percent of that 200 tons of waste. That's 120 tons of salvageable material, but more importantly, that's 80 tons of additional waste going into the landfill daily. When fully operational, that's 240 tons of additional waste into our landfill each day. We were told that regional will be collecting waste from not only North Carolina, but from other states too. I believe that current regulations do not allow waste from other states to go into our landfill. Where will the unsalvageable waste from those states go and how will it be monitored? Will they receive a waiver from our county commissioners to allow out-of-state waste into the landfill? Our trash bill increased last year. How much will it increase when the landfill closes? There are just too many unanswered questions about this proposal. I am 100% against more trash coming into Haywood County. Please, please, please don't make Haywood County the waste capital of North Carolina. Peter Watkinson, I believe. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'm just going to state um, what's been printed on the uh, internet and then some responses to that and let people quander or ponder those, those statements. This was written by Becky Johnson, Recycling Business Startups in Haywood. Supposedly, we're going to add a minimum of 30 jobs to the local account economy and as many as 70 at full build-out. If you look at the population of Haywood County between 18 and 65 years old, perhaps that's about 36,000 people. Well, if you add 30 jobs to that, it's statistically insignificant. It's .0008. If you had 70, .0019. There are no jobs there. 
No reason to do it just from a job perspective alone. Let's go on. It says that Mr. Allison doesn't anticipate household recyclables accounting for much of his volume. He did define that for us this evening. He said that would be perhaps up to 20%. I would argue 20% is a significant figure. The footprint of the metal building for phase one is 1.5 acres. If it succeeds, he plans to expand with two more buildings. All right, 1.5 acres of 10 graded acres in existence of the total 55.8. That's a lot more to be graded yet. Allison has been in the research and development phase of this venture for a couple of years. It's venture capitalism. Venture capitalism is the highest risk investment you can make. Mr. Allison predicts recycling will become a robust industry as the landfill model becomes passe and no longer practical. He's entitled to his opinion. We're entitled to ours. Um, while the operation doesn't include a production or a manufacturing side, industries that use recycled materials could be drawn to the area to be close to the source of their raw material. It reminds me of the gecko on the Geico ad. You could save so much money by calling. The flip side of that is you could also not save. A theory backed by number crunching by a Western Carolina economics professor assessed the proposed operation's economic impact for the county it, it may be feasible. Well, where is that study and why can't we see it? Thank you, sir. Al, oh, is that my time? May I make one comment? I'll close on this then. Whether or not it's something the county can do with respect to zoning, perhaps the county should not do it. Tammy Powell. I'm Tammy Powell. I often tell people that the most unusual thing about my family is probably that my parents, my husband's parents, all three of my brothers, both my husband's brothers, our children, and 15 nieces and nephews all live in the same town. Most in Beaverdam. Not only that, but all eight of our grandparents and even most of our great grandparents called Canton their hometown. My dad was the greatest man I've ever known. He passed on his massive love for Beaverdam in such a way that today, 21 of his children and children's children call it home, and no doubt more in the future. I've never spoken in a forum such as this before, but I had to today. The commissioners have gone out on an unprecedented limb and have pierced the very heart of the deep roots of my entire family. I come today on behalf of my hometown, where I twirled a baton in the Labor Day Parade, cheered on the football field, went to my first movie at the Colonial Theater, swam at the YMCA and even in the Pigeon River. Something is obscenely wrong when we have to even take our time to be here to defend what our commissioners have vowed to defend. Almost all of my family's memories include our hometown, but it seems to have become an aging white elephant to some in this room. Even our local powers that be who are set up to protect, not destroy. If you won't help us, for goodness sake, don't hurt us. Those of us who live in Canton and the commissioners know well the unsolicited comments and flat out insults that are so freely hurled when we tell someone we live in Canton. It's open season. From how do you stand the smell? To my all time favorite, it looks like something out of communist Russia. Realtors in all of Western North Carolina tell clients, whatever you do, don't buy in Canton. Canton has enough strikes against it. We don't need another one. We're not a dumping ground, pun intended, for whatever other towns and states won't accept. 
There has to be an excellent reason this dump was refused by Transylvania, Henderson, and Buncombe counties. And I'm sorry, but we don't know this, un, this inexperienced, unproven man or his inexperienced, unproven company, so we don't believe any of it. Um, <laughs> I heard a harsh, callous comment that the paper mill smell would cover up the dump smell. Is that your mindset? Is that the commissioner's mindset? Why would you even consider giving these critics more ammunition against one of your own? Canton is not disposable as it seems to be here today. It is precious to many of us. It is our heritage, our past, present, and hopefully our future. I close with words from Haywood County's own Balsam Range as they expressed what our area means to us. This ain't just another paper town on a random riverside. She was built with blood and sweat and tears and a whole lot of pride. From the mountains and the farmland, from the smokestacks she has grown, this ain't just another paper town. It's the one that I call home. Thank you. Jeffrey Powell. <laughs> Jeffrey Powell. <laughs> Jeffrey? Yes. This will be the last speaker for a minute. We're going to have to take about a five minute break to change the tape. Um, so, those in the control room, if you can prepare to do that. A man once stated that subtle deception is so very dangerous because it can be institutionalized as business as usual. He went on to say, therefore, the challenge and the obligation of every elected and appointed official is to create, nurture, promote, and protect a culture of government transparency. We must not accept exemptions based on phrases such as law and order, public safety, or national security, or other so high-minded sounding rationalizations. For to do so would legitimize behaving in an undemocratic manner in the name of democracy. He then, he then said the First Amendment is not a suggestion. We must institutionalize open and honest government in a way that not only obeys the letter of our Constitution and open meeting laws, but their spirit as well. And I thought that was a great statement you made, Mr. Chairman, in 2005. And I think it should apply today. And. <laughs> And also, I, I appreciate those experts that have come and given facts that, you know, I'm not an expert on the environment or recycling, and neither are any of you guys on this board. And one of the things that hurt me the most was when you got on the news and said, if those people that, that built there after the industrial site went in, didn't, they shouldn't have lived there. Well, you're a guardian of the people, I would hope, in taking your position that you take as commissioner of this board. And I would hope that you would stand up for the people here and the people in Beaver Dam community. It was very demeaning and demoralizing for you to just flippantly say, if they don't like it, they shouldn't live here. That's not what a guardian does. A guardian takes the thoughts, the concerns, and the fears of the people in mind, and he does not demean them or demoralize them in a public setting. That was very unprofessional. Thank you. Okay, we'll take about a five-minute break. <laughs> 